What's up my producer friends, I'm David with another MonsterProductions.com. So today we're going to be taking a look at Sakura, which is a pretty popular plugin, especially for beat makers. You see a lot of YouTubers using it, but the question is, do they know how to really use it, use it? And in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually use it, use it, use it. So. Let's get straight into it. So this plugin is available with the all plugins bundle. You can also purchase it as a standalone plugin if you have like the producer edition or the signature bundle. Now Sakura is actually a really unique plugin. It's not your stereotypical synth and it's designed in a way to ultimately allow you to get more organic sounds out of it and specifically like stringed, like bowed instrument sounds and plucked instrument sounds. So like violins and stuff like that. So we're gonna start by taking a look at this area in the middle here and in order to follow along you want to probably go ahead and go up here you can click this go to default and then find the default preset for me it's number 29 and that's going to give us an initialized preset which is just a sawtooth wave with a filter built into it already so that's going to sound like this now right off the bat what is unique about this particular plugin is that instead of having oscillators it has a string one and a string two. And it gives us a little bit of a visual here. So when I play something, you can actually see that our string is vibrating. It's kind of a cool little visual. And then we have some different knobs to tweak, which will kind of create different timbres and different sounds. So for example, I can mess with the decay knob up here in the upper left, which controls the decay of the sound and creates kind of a plucky sound. The amount knob also does a similar thing, although it sounds quite a bit different. So we'll take a listen to this. So as I move the amount, it starts sounding more like an actual plucked instrument. And you can hear how it kind of goes out of tune a little bit. So if it, if you do want to you know, change the amount to the point where it starts getting a little bit out of tune and you want to make sure that it is in the right key, you can go back up here to the tune knob here and this is going to change the tuning in sense so you can move it up just a little bit and try and kind of match the original, the key that it was in. So I can come back out here and kind of listen to it. Bring this back up. So right in there sounds like it's playing about the same note. I can also mess with the sharpness here to get even more of a plucky sound. And then we also have this little plus minus switch right here. And what this does is it controls the string reflection phase, which ultimately changes the pitch. So if I click minus, it kind of sounds like it's bringing it down an octave. Now, so far, everything that we've done has just been on string one, which is this top string here. And if I wanna actually bring in string number two, I have to start bringing in this knob here. So if I bring this up to the middle to 50%, we're gonna have the same amount of string one and string two playing at the same time. So I'll go ahead and do that. So you can hear that. So now if I wanted this to sound the same as this, I'd have to go change the amount. But let's get it a little bit different. So something like that sounds pretty good. And then if I bring this all the way over to the right, only string two is playing. Now below that, we actually have a stereo spread. And when I bring this up, string one is coming out of the right speaker and string two is coming out of the left speaker. And then I can bring it down and it'll be the opposite. And in the middle, both strings are centered. So we'll add a little bit of stereo separation just to give it a little bit more texture. Now, something else that we can mess with here to get even more texture is this side over here. So the level, I can bring this up. And it kind of introduces another harmonic element. So, and I can, I can move this up and down to change that. And I can also mess with the offset. to kind of get a, a different character. And I can also mess with this here. Let's 
and I can get some more interesting sounds with that as well. Now, another thing that we can mess with is the ratio. So if I click on this, I can set a ratio. So when I set it as a two to one ratio, string number one, the upper string is going up an octave and the bottom string, string number two is staying the same. And as I go higher, string number one keeps going higher in pitch. And then if I go lower, string number two will go lower in pitch. So you can experiment with that. Now on string number two, instead of having a level knob down here, we have a feedback knob. So this creates a little bit more feedback. So that can be interesting, create some interesting characteristics and timbres with your sound. And over here we have a saturation knob. So this just introduces saturation or distortion. So that sound right there sounds really cool and I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but if we added some effects onto it, I could just introduce reverb, chorus, and delay. Maybe we could get rid of the chorus. Pretty cool sounding pluck. I'm gonna go ahead and mute those though. I don't wanna get too far ahead of myself. So next to all that, we have our envelope. And this is just your standard envelope. It's your ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, and release. So if I wanted to, when I clip, when I first hit the note and I release it, it just immediately releases, but I could set the release up high. To give it even more of an organic sound, uh, kind of like you're, I guess, like hitting a mallet against something. And of course we could change the attack too. So depending on the sound that you're trying to create, you know, you could control the attack decay, sustain and release to however you want. And this is controlled by the overall, uh, I guess you could say volume or amplitude of the synth. Whereas we have another attack decay, sustain and release on this side, which is controlled by the filter. But right now we have our cutoff, which is set to basically the middle. And if I set this up, we have a lot more highs coming through. And I can also bring it down to get rid of some of those highs. Down here we have a low cut, so it's a, a different filter. If I wanna cut out some of those lower frequencies, and then again, within this filter, I can control the attack. Decay. And sustain. So next to that, we have our exciter. And this is pretty cool. So we can actually set a noise rate. And what this does is you can set the noise rate and then if you have more of a plucky sound, generally you want it up toward the click. And then if you have more of like a bowed instrument sound, you want it up toward more of a, like a noise type thing. So I could uh, essentially get rid of this. And it starts to create a little bit more of a, a sort of a bowed instrument sound. So we'll take this off. And where things start to get really interesting with this plugin is when we start to enable these things. So we have all these different resonators and we can control the frequency of the resonance with this knob here. Let me take that one off. We'll do this one at a time. So starting with zero, 
Add another one. Add another one. I can turn up one louder than another one. Let me try and go back to this pluckier sound. Now moving on down, this is where things can get even more interesting and you can get even more creative. We have a free envelope here and we also have an LFO. And so I can map different things like any of these parameters to um, either the envelope or the LFO. Some parameters actually work better than others. Some really don't work with each other at all. But for example, one thing that I could do is I could uh, essentially take the LFO, let's say, and I could map it to the pitch and then I can bring this up, let's bring the LFO up. And then I could turn this down a little bit, get it a little bit more subtle, or I could bring it all the way up. So you can get pretty creative with that. We don't have to do the pitch. I mean, we could do the level. Now, a couple of things I kind of neglected to mention, which I probably should have mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial, is the options that we have up here at the top. These are our global options. So I did mention the tune, but we also have a transpose feature. So if I want to bring this down an octave or two octaves, but I like kind of an octave. And then I can also change the overall volume, the master volume of the synth with this volume knob here. We also have an options which you can click and you can save presets, load presets, and reset presets with the options there. So anyway, back down here, this can be a lot of fun to experiment with. And then really the last portion of the synth is the effects section. So we could add like a chorus effect on here. That's kind of cool. Let's try adding a delay. And then of course we have a reverb as well. We can choose to sync the delay if we want to, or we can adjust it, uh, the time. Anyway, that's pretty much all there is to it. I'll let you go ahead and experiment with the effects section a little bit more on your own. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That'll let you know anytime I release videos in the future. Right now I'm releasing videos once a week on the weekends. And I do a lot of production tutorials, mostly FL Studio related. Also a lot of sound design tutorials. So if you're interested in learning about other synths inside FL Studio, I do have some tutorials on Citrus, GMS, and some other synths inside FL Studio, and I'll be making more in the future. Also, if you're new to production or if you're struggling with anything production related, I do offer one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description to that if you wanna check it out, and I will see you guys in the next video.